Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode of the Balanced Vibes Podcast. I am your host, Gersten, and today we're talking about the reasons why you are not maintaining your results. And by the way, when I'm saying you are not many maintaining your results, I'm not saying that this is you, specifically you who is not maintaining their fat loss, weight loss results, but in general, why it happens that um, somebody does not maintain the results. Let's say that they lost the weight, they lost the, the body fat that they wanted to, but then it all came back because isn't that something that happens? all the time. We see it all the time. Before we get to that topic, I have a question for you. Do you have my guide yet? The Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Blueprint. Do you have it yet? Or do you not have it yet? If you don't have it yet, what are you waiting for? Because if you want to build a strong body, lean body, have more muscle. Yes, let's use that word. Muscle, you want to have muscle, bu- muscular, muscular body. You want to look fit and lean and toned. I don't know about you, but I really wanted that. You know, a couple of years ago when I gained a little bit more body fat than was comfortable for me, I started really missing that old athletic me. I wanted to look athletic again. I wanted to fit fit in my clothes again. I wanted to look fitter and leaner. And this was my goal. I wasn't really necessarily even thinking about how much weight can I lose. I didn't have like a weight goal in mind. To be honest with you, I didn't even have a weight uh, scale uh, at home at that time. I just wanted to look leaner. I wanted to feel like myself again because this new body fat that I had in my body didn't feel comfortable. I was okay with myself, but I did didn't love it, love it. And so I decided I'm going to do this. So I'm going to teach you exactly the same thing. So how to set your calories, how to set your protein, what kind of workouts to do if you have the same goals that I had back then. So if you don't have that guide yet, make sure to get it. It is everywhere where I'm hanging out on YouTube, show notes, blog, and also on my Instagram bio. So make sure to grab it because it's not going to be forever. Uh, It's not going to be available forever. Okay, but today let's talk about a couple of reasons, uh, specifically four reasons why we're not able to maintain our results. Because, I mean, who cares about quick weight loss? Who cares about quick, um, you know, drop in pounds? You see like, okay, yesterday I was 159 and then 158 and every day I, I dropped a pound. Who cares about that if you cannot keep that off? I think that the main goal is to lose the body fat and the weight and slowly and then keep it off too because what's the point of starting over or uh, all the time i don't want you to start over again i want you to do it one time and in a reasonable way so that you don't have to look for another like weird diet ever again so that you have your results and you maintain them so the first reason that i see why people may don't maintain and gain the body weight that they lost back is that they did something very extreme to lose that body weight Okay, so we all know about fat diet, diets, we all know about quick fixes, and we should all know that they don't work. And honestly, I don't know who doesn't know it yet. And maybe I'm just, it's just me because I've been in this space for a long time. I'm like, of course they don't work. I've seen so many times that they don't work, uh, you know, for my clients who have tried a shake diet and a cabbage soup diet and an egg diet. This stuff does not work. But if you use this method, you did something like that, and then um, you you lost weight really quickly, then it does not stay that way. Because what happens with those diets, whatever it is, a shake or egg or cabbage soup diet, the point is that they take your calories way too low. And whatever the approach is, how you decrease your calories super low, you are going to lose weight. But this is not the fat loss. This is just water weight. So if you literally see every day, like you see a pound going down because you went from not eating 2000 calories to 1200, because that's what the diet said, of course, you're going to lose a lot of water weight at first. And you, of course, it's going to make you like excited at first. Like, oh my God, the scale is going down. But because the cut was so big and this diet was so unsustainable, you are not able to maintain that result. So please don't do that. Please don't do any of those stupid diets anymore, because even if you lose weight quickly, it will come back. And it, it will come back because also at one point you are so deprived that, that you cannot continue eating only eggs or you cannot continue eating only drinks and the, or like the shakes. And the shake is literally the last thing in the world that you ever want to see because you're so sick of it. Now you're like, give me the food, right? Give me the food. And it's the most normal biology, biology uh, like you, you can't fight against your biology, right? No matter how much willpower you have, you cannot fight against your biology. 
of course you're going to be hungry, of course you're going to have huge cravings, of course you're going to eat a lot of food after coming off that 1000 or 1200 calorie diet, no matter how much willpower you have, and this is why you are gaining weight. Okay, so the next reason why somebody may not be able to maintain their fat loss, weight loss, is that they don't have a post-macro plan. So let's say that now there's somebody who did the whole macro fat loss in a really good way. There's nothing extreme about it. They decreased their calories gradually. They were in a deficit. They did the diet break, blah, blah, blah. Everything was good. Everything was nice. But then what happens afterwards? There's no plan. So let's say that they end their fat loss phase at a certain number of calories and then they don't do the reverse diet. Reverse diet is a really important part of your whole fat loss journey if you are using macros, because what reverse diet does is that it increases your, your calories little by little by little so that your calories come back up again without you losing the results that you got when you were in a fat loss phase. I know it almost sounds like too good to be true, but it is true. You can, and if you do it right, you will maintain the results that you got by eating more. So let's say that you finished your um, fat loss phase at 1700 calories maybe, and your total, you have to get back to 2100 something like that, just saying random numbers here, then we can get there. We can add little by little by little by little and you will have, you will continue to have your results. Now, if you don't do that, if you don't have that reverse diet after your fat loss phase and you basically go from that low calorie point to just like eating, you know, right back to your maintenance level, of course you're going to gain weight. Of course you're going to gain body fat because you're just increasing your calories too quickly. You're not doing it gradually. And this is why the weight comes back on and some fat comes back on and you're like, oh my goodness, why did I do this whole thing? So I really recommend that if you are using macronutrition as your way to lose body fat, get leaner, get fitter, that you also do a proper reverse diet after the fat loss is over. And just a uh, quick reminder again, you should not stay in a fat loss phase for longer than 12, maybe 16 weeks, and you can do it twice. Then um, with the diet break in between, and then you have to increase your calories back up and do it gradually. You have to do the reverse diet to maintain your results. Okay, so the next step, the third, uh, not step, but the third reason why somebody is not able to maintain the results is that a lot of times people stop the neat activity and sometimes also exercise. So a lot of people see this whole project like, okay, this is something that I just do like once, like this exercise is just something that I do for the duration of this fat loss and then that's it. And this is not how you want to do it. You want to find the way of exercising that you can maintain, that you keep doing also when you are not in a fat loss phase anymore. And a lot of times I see that people don't have a problem necessarily with the exercise. They still go to the gym or they still do some strength training at home. But where a lot of people seem to fall off is the NEAT, right? NEAT exercise and um, EAT means non-exercise associated thermogenesis. It's basically all the workout, not the workouts, but all the movement that you do outside of workouts. So walking and doing the, the laundry and walking your dog and playing with your kids and all that kind of stuff. That all of a sudden just drops. Because I, I gotta tell you, most of my clients have to make an effort to get their daily steps in. And I do want most of them to walk about 10,000 steps. Some people really they just cannot do this. Okay, cool. The goal is 8,000. But most people have to um, have to intentionally increase their steps. It doesn't just come naturally, especially after 2020, where most people are home a lot more than they were before. They don't come naturally. So we have to put some effort into it. So now if we think that, okay, this was only for the duration of my fat loss phase, I'm not going to have to walk more. This is one reason why the weight uh, uh, wants to come back on. So keep that in mind. Make that a lifestyle habit. Make, make walking something that you do every day and find ways to make walking fun for you. It can be listening to a podcast. It can be calling to your friends. Whatever it is that you, that makes makes it a little bit easier for you. Maybe you have a buddy. You just like go with him or her. Um, 
kids always want to, uh, you know, maybe they ride their bikes and you walk, whatever it is, and get creative with ways to get those extra steps in. Just yesterday, I talked to my client who told me that, you know, every time when her daughter is in a swim lesson, she just walks, you know, back and forth by uh, the pool. And, you know, why not do that? You could just sit there, but you're sitting all day anyways, right? And uh, why, why wouldn't you then walk? And another client whose kids play uh, baseball, she said too, like, okay, now I actually walk, you know, I walk around the court or the track or whatever I just do it instead of just sitting in the car come on like why are we sitting in the car especially when the weather is good why are we sitting in our car faces in our phones okay yeah if there's something to do if you have like work to do like I get it you know sometimes there are reasons but in general why not to move the kids are moving why are you not moving let's do it right and in general yes find more ways to to walk more park a little bit further away take the stairs all that kind of stuff it helps to keep your uh, calorie burn high and it is really good for your body so make sure that you continue to get your steps in even if you are not um, in the fat loss phase anymore so forgetting to do that type of movement is one of um, the biggest reasons also why uh, some people are not able to maintain their fat loss results and then the first, uh, sorry, the fifth, fourth, the fourth point uh, why some people are not able to maintain the results is that they don't do any check-ins anymore. So I have said it many times, I don't think that macro nutrition, uh, macro counting should be forever, um, that you should be, uh, you know, putting everything into your app forever and ever, like how much you're eating, how many reps you ate. I don't think this is forever. Like you have to be able to develop a lot of enough self-trust so that you can make decisions without an app, right? This is, a, this is the end goal. Nobody should be tracking their macros forever. However, I want to say that once in a while, it is worthwhile to do a quick check-in. See, where's my food today? Uh, how much protein am I getting today? Uh, maybe I am way over my maintenance calories. Maybe my maintenance is like 2,300, but oh my goodness, I just ate like 2,600. That's why if I've been doing this continuously all the time, a bit of snacking and not tracking, then um, then this is where the weight gain comes from. So I recommend that if you, you know, stop tracking, you're ready to move on to intuitive eating, which is totally fine. And I encourage that uh, after you have done tracking for a while. Still, I, I would recommend that you once in a while check in maybe do it like once a week or maybe do it twice a week and see where am i at or when you start noticing that okay my body's changing like uh, i'm not i don't have the same results anymore something's happening okay let me just like put put in the numbers real quick and see where i'm at and see where i might be off and where i can kind of put myself back um on that better track maybe so uh, these are my thoughts why it may happen that you don't maintain your results so one more time the first reason is if you got your results by doing something completely extreme, something that had you eat like 1,000, 2,000, or, sorry, 1,000, 1,200 calories, and now you're so hungry that you're going to eat a tons more after that, that's going to lead to quick weight loss, weight gain. The second thing was that you did not have a post macros plan. In other words, you just stopped uh, at a deficit and then you just started eating, you know, whatever you didn't do that gradual increase you didn't do a reverse diet so that will definitely uh cause you some weight gain then the next thing was not paying attention to your neat activity the steps that you're taking so make sure that you keep those up and then the last thing that you're not checking in once in a while you don't know what's going on so i recommend that you do it every once in a while to maintain your results all right this is all i got for you today make sure that you grab my lean ladies calorie protein and workout guide if you want to look fitter healthier stronger you want to know how many calories you should be eating how much of that should be protein i will give you exact calculations how to figure these numbers out for you all right this is all i got for you today i will see you again very soon Bye bye